Hey guys, it's me, Greg. I want to speak to you about Venus retrograde today. And I'm surprised I haven't made a video about this earlier, but I think for some reason the timing is, is really right for me to make this now because I'm kind of feeling the retrograde myself. Now, first of all, um, Venus retrograde is like Mercury retrograde, okay? It's when this personal planet appears to be going backwards. So it appears to be moving back. It doesn't actually, it's just from Earth, that's what it looks like. So for instance, if you're driving, and you're driving on the highway, 70 miles an hour, and a car pulls up next to you, also at 70 miles an hour, if you increase to 75 miles an hour, it may appear that that car is going backwards. It isn't actually, but it just looks that way. Same thing with Venus retrograde, okay. So Venus is the planet of beauty, in mythology, it's Venus or Aphrodite, the goddess of love, okay? So in a personal chart, Venus is going to represent what it is you love, what you kind of give yourself to, what you beautify, what you make better, what your values are, what your beliefs are, what you feel magnetically pulled towards, all of those things, about, you know, all of those um, really intense feeling that bring uh, intense feelings that bring things together, okay? So, now that it's in retrograde, it makes it more challenging. It kind of um, shifts the focus. So, if you express yourself really openly and freely usually, or if there's something that you always love, when Venus is in retrograde, it alters your perception of that, it alters your relationship with it, it alters the way that thing responds to you. Okay, so Venus retrograde is about reevaluating the things you love. Rather than give yourself completely, it kind of puts a barrier between you and that thing. So you may feel a bit of a block between whatever it is. It can be a person, it can be an activity, it can be um, your creative output. It can be anything that you really feel that, that feeling of love towards. There's going to be a, a sense of blockedness. And that will then in turn make you reevaluate that, okay? And that is why uh, Venus retrograde traditionally isn't seen as a wonderful time to start a new business or to meet new people or to get married or to um, kind of undertake any cosmetic procedures or to get a new hairstyle or to, like me for instance, I bought this wax, it was different and it looks, no. I'm not a 12 year old raver, <laughs> so I need to get rid of that. Um, so that's the kind of thing, Venus retrograde, um, those kind of things, those aspects of life become a little bit more challenging, okay? So the other thing that's involved here is that um, the sign that it's in. First of all, let's look at what Venus rules, okay? Venus rules uh, Taurus and Venus rules Libra. So it rules two signs of the zodiac. Now, so for instance, if you're a Taurus sun, you'll feel this strongly. If you're a Taurus rising sign, like me, you'll feel this. If you're a Taurus moon, this will have a strong impact on you. Same thing with Libra. If you have Libra in your chart, sun, rising or moon, you'll feel this quite strongly in that aspect. But also, if you have other planets in either Taurus or Libra, you'll really be affected by this. Again, personally, I have five planets in Libra. So I have a Taurus rising, I have five planets in Libra. So I have six things altogether that are ruled by Venus. And the fact that Venus, Venus is now going retrograde is going to have a big impact on me and the way I, um, I am in those specific things. So for example, I have got Mercury in Libra in my sixth house. So the planet of communication for me, I try to communicate in a way that's harmonious and that builds bridges between people and it's in my sixth house so it's day-to-day -day routine, okay? So because Venus is in retrograde, that Mercury is even going to be affected by it in some way and it may be that I try out some new ways of communicating. Again, this isn't always negative because even though it doesn't feel smooth and it puts blocks in, it forces us to look at things differently, okay? So whenever we do look at things differently, we find new ways of doing things. Um, you know, if people, I don't know, 50 years ago or 100 years ago were just happy um, riding around in 
a, a cart and like horse drawn carriage, then no one would have bothered to invent the car. Okay, so we have to do things differently to, to make progress. And that's what this is about. So that's really something that is interesting. So have a look at your chart, have a look at what is in Libra, what is in Taurus. Um, a great way to get your own chart is to go to either astrodeans.com or astrotheme.com and you just put in your birth details. You put in your place of birth, your date of birth and your time of birth and it'll draw up your chart and you can just see the symbol of the planet and what sign that's in. So that's interesting. The other thing about this Venus though is that on the 25th of July, have I mentioned by the way when it's retrograde? If not, it is in retrograde and it has been in retrograde since the 25th of July and it will stay in retrograde until the 6th of September. So we've got about two weeks, 16 days, 17 days left. So two and a half weeks. So there is still a bit of a stretch with this. So examine the things that you love, examine the altered relationship, examine how that could possibly open some, some new doors for you. Okay. But between the 25th of July and the end of July, um, Venus was in Virgo. So I think at the end of that time, it would have been very much about looking at things differently. But now since the beginning of August through until the 6th of September, at least, while Venus is still in retrograde, the planet Venus is going to be in Leo. Okay, so Venus, the goddess of love in Leo is like, look at me. It's like the goddess of love um, in dressed up as a peacock prancing around saying, look at me, how fabulous I am. Uh, love very effusively, very expansively, very open heartedly, very strongly. Leo is the lion. Okay. So it's warm, it's confident, it's passionate, it's powerful. And when the goddess of love connects with that energy, it's, it's all of those things. It's big love, big feelings. Look at me. It's lots of confidence. It's, you know, I don't want just regular hair. I want big hair. I want big pictures. I want things to be exciting and enthusiastic and warm and all of those things. Um, so, so that's the first thing about Venus in Leo, but because it's in retrograde, it may mean that you approach things a little bit heavy handedly. So usually when Venus is in Leo, all of those big things, you know, the big expansive effusive kind of thing that can go down as charming and lovely, or it can go down as, you know, that's a bit much. And when it's in Venus in, in retrograde, then you come, a, it's harder to come across as well as you usually would. Okay. It's, things are more easily misunderstood. Your charm, your love can be misinterpreted. And that's what this is. <laughs> also because Venus, so there's a lot to this and I'm sorry if I'm overloading you, but um, also because Venus in Leo is about uh, really being out there, it could mean increased sex drive. It could mean increased desire to be with someone. But again, because it's in retrograde, there's a likelihood that you could connect with the wrong person or that you could throw out some of your usual behavioral rules like, um, you know, going for someone that you wouldn't really ordinarily go for. Like if you want someone who's genuinely loving and kind and honest and you meet someone who has a lot of those qualities, but you get a kind of sense that they're not particularly honest, Venus in retrograde could kind of be responsible for you saying, well, let's just dismiss that, you know, let's just ignore that red flag and just go for it. So there is a tendency to get involved in situations that don't particularly or necessarily serve you. So be careful about the kind of new ventures that you're starting, the new people that you're engaging with, the new, uh, the new activities you started that you're completely obsessed with and that you think, oh, I love this, I love this, I love this so much. It may be temporary, okay? When Venus moves forward again, your perception of that click may completely spin around and you may perceive that very, very differently. So that's, that, that's really it. Um, it happens... For 40 to 50-ish, I think it's 40 to, I think it's 40 to 48 days every 18 months. Okay, so it, it is quite a rare occurrence. So around a month-ish, a bit over a month, every year and a half. 
So when it happens, it's a really good time to step back and say, what am I doing? If you're an artist, if you're um, someone who's at a, at a one year anniversary or something like that, it could be a great time to say, okay, is this working? Could we do it maybe differently? And if you are experiencing some hiccups in your relationship right now, right now, maybe this is helpful because it, you don't need to immediately throw the towel in. There is other thing, there are other things at work here that are complicating things, and give it at least till the sixth of September to see how things progress. Then things might calm down again in terms of your love for that other person. Okay, so I hope this has been interesting and useful to you. It gives you some, some new info on Venus Retrograde. I'll be with you for the daily tarot reading on the channel, the monthly astrology forecasts, um, and all the other kind of videos that I do. Have a great weekend, and I'll speak to you soon.